Well, I thought today I've been thinking about this for a bit and uh, I decided I would do some birch trees against a blue sky with some birds. So this is my practice piece. Actually, I started as always with, um, well, actually I'll tell you what I started with this morning and this will be coming up soon. Um, I'm going to do a sort of autumnal wreath garland and it will have chickadees and a robin and an owl and a red cardinal and mushrooms and berries and things like that. So just to let you know that that's coming soon. Um, but I haven't got time to paint that today. Um, so that'll be coming soon. So anyway, I thought, what can I do that wouldn't take quite so long? So I thought about birch trees, silver birch trees, the ones that we have here in France and a lot of them in England. So this is my rough sketch and I developed that a little bit into this and now I have painted that. I'm going to do this one with you. Um, so what I did was I photocopied that, scribbled on the back like I always do and then transferred that to my sheet of paper. And the paper that I'm going to be using is a page in this book of Canson XL mixed media paper. It has a nice texture and that's the thing that's important about this. If you're going to use this technique, it's best to have paper that's got some texture to it. It'll give a, a better effect for the um, irregularities of the bark. So that's what I honestly would suggest you use. It could be any kind of watercolour paper, really, because they've all got a texture, but this one happens to be particularly suitable for this painting. So I've now, I've drawn in my um, tree, um, uh, just basic outlines. So the first thing I'm going to do, the very first thing, is um, after I've rubbed out the lines where I don't want them, um, I'm not going to bother to redraw over this. This is just the traced line and that's going to be, I think that'll be okay, I hope. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint in the sky behind and I'm going to just be using these three colours plus black here for this painting. Just want to check that uh, I've got the whole thing in view. Um, so this is ultramarine blue. Uh, you could use any other blue, cerulean, cobalt. Not phthalo blue really, because that's a little bit unnatural. Uh, um, but ultramarine is quite nice, nice and soft. This is cadmium red. This is mostly for the cardinal. This is black. This one happens to be a an old Holland. Chevening an intense black, which is quite nice. The cadmium is De La Rowney, as it happens, but it could be anything, as is the ultramarine blue, which is a nice ultramarine, actually, the De La Rowney one. Um, nice and clean looking. And this is um, burnt sienna. This happens to be a uh, schminker, I think. Yes. Or could be old, could be anything, really. Could be Windsor and Newton, could be anything. Anyway, so there we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, whip up a little bit of um, blue here and using a flat brush, and this is a flat water brush. Uh, it doesn't have to be a water brush, but a water brush is quite nice if you want to add water while you're painting. Uh, so that's quite handy. This is a Meaden one, so if you haven't got a um, a flat, because I think a flat is quite nice for this. You don't, it doesn't absolutely have to be a flat brush, but if if you've got one, it's probably as, as good a brush as any. You can use a round, doesn't matter. And I think I sort of went for the flat because I thought it'll be easier to do the straight lines of the tree trunks like that. And don't bother about trying to make it even or anything like that. You don't need to. In fact, a nice little bit of um, irregular shake as you go down. The page is probably better than having it all nice and even because that's not the way that we paint, is it? So we just go down the page between the trunks. This is the one place where you, you might get lost, you might forget which bit is a trunk and which bit is the sky. If you're anything like me, you lose track of what you were doing two minutes ago. 
But anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's uneven, it doesn't matter if you go over the birds a little bit. Just make that a little bit softer down there. Just wrap it off a bit with a tissue. That's a bit far. It really doesn't matter. And then around the robin here. So we have a robin, we have a chickadee, and we have a red cardinal. And this would probably make a nice Christmas card, actually. I'm not sort of presenting it as a Christmas card uh, per se, but you could use this design for Christmas for sure. So there we are, that's the background. And that's going to um, want to dry. And if, if you don't like the backgrounds, then you can sort of go over them a little bit and try to get rid of them. But um, this paper is quite good from that point of view. Doesn't seem to mind too much. I don't know what happened there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, we've got another back run there. Some people call them cauliflowers. Some people call them back runs, um, run or run backs. Run back, back run. Sounds like something out of football, doesn't it? Anyway, so just even that bit about a little bit there. Okie dokie. That one seems a bit dark. I might just um, lift some of that off with a tissue. This multimedia paper, mixed media paper, I don't do that on purpose, by the way. It's not an affectation. I just keep getting it wrong. Um, this mixed media paper is, what's the word? What's I going to say? <laughs> Quite. Uh, quite easy going. You can lift things off and scratch things out and so on and so forth quite easily. Okay, so now we're going to do the tree trunks. And to do that, I have got here some credit cards. This is an Ikea card and this was a Credit, uh, credit Agricole or whatever. Yeah, credit, that's my bank. Um, it's all right, doesn't, it's not, doesn't mean anything now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my black here and we've got a little bit of water there. And I'm going to start picking up paint on this edge here of the card, which I've cut to be about a centimeter. And um, I might want to try it out first on on something else, make sure it's working. And then basically, all I'm going to do is go over the entire uh, trees, putting in the marks that you see on such a tree. This is definitely the easiest way to do it that I've ever come across. And you can do nice thin branches as well using the point. And this is where you can relax and just paint the tree the easy way. doesn't really matter exactly what size your flat edge is. These trees come in different sorts. So some of them have uh, more and some have less. You can take a line down the side as well so that it stands out really well if you want to.
and these little spindly branches are quite nice to put in as well. We come to the birds last. <coughs> you can use different sizes if you want to use a, a thinner one. You can cut something thinner and you can have a little bit more control. And the thin one's probably better for things like the branches. But personally, myself, I like the, the about a centimetre. I'm going to go past that bird. Once you've done one go over, you can always come back and do some more. So you might not want to do too many the first time round because, you know, it's up to you. You can have a, a fairly realistic look with this, or you can uh, go for a much more abstract look. It's up to you. But it's quite a nice graphic um, and quite expressive and easy and fun. I decided to put blue sky behind because I thought that looked more autumnal than the the reds and I'm a little bit worried about using too much in the way of sunset colours at the moment because what with all the fires and everything that people are living through in so many places. I was talking the other day to my ex-husband, we were divorced decades and decades and decades ago. Um, Anyway, he, he lives, he's my daughter's father. He lives in um, near Edmonton in Alberta, Canada. <laughs> and uh, they are struggling at the moment to go outside because he said, I have to put a mask on to use the lawnmower and cut the grass because of all the smoke from the wildfires. Terrible. So I hope those of you who are in Canada, I know we have quite a lot of Canadians watching. Hope nobody else is in this. He said, oh God, it's really awful. He was saying, I had to, I've bought a fireproof safe so that I can put all the old photos and any important documents in just in case we have to evacuate and don't have a chance to take things with us. All right, so now the last one coming up. I think this is a, a, a good technique if you're going to be doing, say you were going to be doing uh, a lot of Christmas cards or something and you wanted a technique that you could reliably repeat. This would be a good one. And sometimes you want to go from the left to the right like that and sometimes you want to go the other way. And sometimes you want it to be quite hard, quite dark and sometimes quite light. Okie doke, so now that's dry and I'm going to come back to the birds now and I've got here a number five round brush so it's quite reasonably small because um, this is reasonably demanding of um, some level of accuracy because obviously the birds are reasonably small so if you did the whole picture a little bit bigger um, that would uh, make it not necessary to have a small brush, but uh, for the markings on the birds. So I'm just painting a little bit of the white. I'm just uh, looking at my reference as I go along here. So just sorry about if my voice is going all over the place. 
Um, so yeah, that's the, the top part of the chickadee. And then there's a little bit of dark there on his tail. And then he's got his feet here, his legs. And we'll just put a couple of dashes of black in for the lines on his wings. And then I'll come in in a second with a kind of um, uh, beige, light cream, creamy kind of color. And um, now I need to find my picture of my cardinal. Now, I haven't seen that many cardinals recently because we don't actually have them here in France, but we did have them when I lived in Bermuda. So I do remember vaguely how dramatic and wonderful they are. So there's his black um, face. We put in a line for his um, feet to stand on. I just draw a branch there. I could do that with the card, but I can also do it with the brush. And then the robin doesn't really have much in the way of black, so we'll wash off our brush and come back to the chickadee. And we need a sort of yellowish colour, a pinkish yellow, not too orange, um, greyish, beige colour, something, something like this. And it doesn't matter if it runs. And we'll just put that in like that. And then we'll let that dry. And then we'll put something slightly darker over the back of him. And then for the cardinal, we're going to use cadmium red. And just brush that in. Don't be too bothered about it being super even because a little bit of variety is a good thing. So just, just pop that in and then if it dries a little bit too light in places, you can always come back with a bit more colour. And then we want the red breast of the robin. I always like to put um, quinacridone gold underneath the robin's breasts because I don't think that they're really as bright as we like to make out. And then I usually put a little bit of ultramarine blue just there because they do have that. And then we'll come back with some brown, just mixed with a little bit of black to make a darker brown. And we'll put that here at the back of him and then give him his tail. And then a little bit of red. And we just come in there and smooth that out. And we'll put their eyes on in, in a minute. And draw in his leg. You could do that with a pen if you want. you find that easier. And then we can just give a hint of a beak there for the and the eye. Again you could do that with a brush, sorry, with a pen if you want, rather than the brush. But if you've got a nice point on your brush, that's just as, just as easy, maybe even better. Okay, so then, um, we want a sort of really quite light gray, bluish gray for the back of the chickadee. 
don't want to paint it too solid, something like that. And then I think it's true to say that the red cardinal has a yellow beak and the robin has a brown one. And then you can give them some feathers if you want with some slightly darker colours or you can leave them really simple. Okay, and I want to put in a few more um, sort of spindly branches like this. You can do as many as you want, or as few, or none at all if you don't like them. It's not obligatory. And then if you want, you can put a little bit of shadow on your tree using a light wash of grey to give it a little bit more three-dimensionality, like that. Just down part of it. So it's not quite so flat. This is just ordinary black, nothing special about that. It will dry lighter, that's for sure. You don't want it too dark, do you? And just sort of vary it a little bit. And then I think we need to finish off the chickadee. Give him just a little bit more dark on his wings. And if you want to, you know, just lift it a little bit with a few um, contrasting calligraphic lines just to give it a bit more shape, movement, you can do that as much or as little as you like. And I think we're pretty much there. Okay, I might want to put a tiny dot of highlight in the eye. This is a Artistro extra, extra fine tipped white paint. And if you feel that you've, you know, if you want to add some extra whites, this is ideal, you can come in on your blacks and break them up a bit if you feel that you'd like to do that, but you don't really need to, because I think it's fine, just like that. So there we are, that's that, that's done. Pretty much the same as that one there, really, not too bad. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. You can play around with this until, until you get bored. Put a little bit more in here of this branch, perhaps. Maybe that one ought to continue on a little bit. The thing is, when you finish doing a video like this, you sort of go away and you come back a bit later and you think, oh yeah, I didn't see that thing there that I should have seen, and so on and so forth. And, and you can sort of, so you have the privilege of doing that, but I try to do everything absolutely live. So, I'm going to leave that now, and I hope you enjoyed that. Make a good Christmas card, wouldn't it? I do think so. Okay, I'll let you go. See you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.